everyone. Welcome to Speakers Bank Podcast. So here today, we're going to talk about um, living independently. And um, our guest speaker is Karen. So um, hi, Karen. And so um, one of the co-hosts is um, Camille and Oya. Hello, Oya. Hi, Oya. Hi, everyone. Yep. So, Karen, um, can you talk about um, about living independently? Um, is that the house sitting that you're doing at this moment? Oh, look, that was quite a number of years ago. Uh, my cousin asked me to house sit while she went on holidays uh, with her husband and her daughter and son-in-law. And she had two cats and a dog. Um, but I was quite flawed, quite honoured to do this house sitting for her because she'd never asked me to do very much for her in the past. So I was like, wow, I'm going to take up this opportunity. And I felt really great about that. So I packed up a suitcase and the house was only 15 minutes away from where I lived, but it was still living in that brand new estate, um, in that new brand new suburb at the time which has now been around for quite a while. Um, But it was great. It was fantastic. Um, My skills that I was taught earlier on in life, um, so that was washing, cooking, cleaning, um, shopping, all that kind of thing, uh, they came into practice. They came to fruition, to life. So um, I... Had a great time, looked after the animals, took the little dog for a walk um, every day. That got me out of the house. Um, But then my brain was making plans of, oh, what can I do? You know, my calendar was full. My diary was full. And I took a tablet with me and I could still communicate. I had my laptop up there, which I could do any uni work or TAFE work back then if I needed to. Um, But I had a Windows tablet, I think, back then, so I took that with me and I was quite surprised that I could take my emails wherever I went, which was a great learning. But it was a great learning experience because um, I had the planning in place, like I would put the washing on, hang it out in the line, bring it in, fold it, um, clean the toilet, clean the shower, do the vacuuming, wash the floors, put the dishwasher on. I love dishwashers. Um, so I'm so good with dishwashers, anything mechanical, because I don't have a dishwasher where I live at the moment, but that'll change because I'm going to be buying a new house soon. Um, so it was shopping, grocery shopping, um, going out with friends. Uh, I could still do all the things that I did, but I, my in my brain I was planning things of what I wanted to do each day so it was a really great experience and I still live at home and I still do that independently at home as well yeah so what why is it so important for you to have an independent life um you have to look after yourself as a person with a disability because um when your parents um pass away or they you know they leave this earth you have to know what to do to look after yourself so for me I already know what to do um, myself Um, so it's best always best to teach people with disabilities how to live independently so that they can look after themselves if they are not NDIS independent and they don't have a carer to come to their place look after them yeah. and you know they might have more significant disabilities like they need someone to help them into their wheelchair or to shower them or whatever yeah. but for me um, it's important for me um, to have an independent life because I need to look after myself in my old age so yeah um, I was taught that in my teens to do the washing and in my early life, I was taught how to do washing and ironing and cooking and cleaning and gardening and mowing lawns and stuff um, because when my dad left home, I had to do that. Mum was at work all day and I was looking for work, but I still um, 
had nothing to do. So doing the housework, doing the stuff around the house gave me something to do, gave me initiative to keep going and keep busy. So I still go out to the, the old good old CES and look for work, but um, doing those independent living skills when I was younger actually has helped me later on in life. So um, I still do a lot of stuff around the house or unit that I live in now. So um, I don't like living in a dirty, filthy place. Um, I like my house clean and tidy um, and keep it free of dust and everything yep. else. So, yep. So it's very important for me to look after myself and mum and dad. Well, mum yeah. passes on. Yeah. yeah. So, um, what did you find the most difficult while you living independently? Loneliness, being yeah. bored a bit, trying to mm -hmm. find things to do when you run out of ideas of how to do things. Um, so I guess that's the main thing. Um, I guess that's the main thing of uh, being alone is is having that loneliness and thinking, oh, what am I going to do? Um, where am I going to go? Who can I meet? Blah, blah, blah. And, you know, people are busy at work or having friend or, or friends are busy or they're away or whatever. So yeah. that that was the most difficult thing for me is the loneliness. But yeah. <clears throat> um, I tried to overcome that again, trying to find the things to do to fill in the days or work <laughs> thing or whatever to... Yeah, but yeah. Um, being independent has given me a lot of confidence and self-esteem. So, and I've yeah, got the energy. True. I thrive on the energy that um, I have when I'm independent because oh, it's like you take a break from the person who lives with you um, for a while. So, for example, Mum was away for a week or two. So back in 2000, I couldn't cope with that. Yeah. So I got sick. I got sick and I ended up on a nebulizer pump for two weeks. When she came back, it was fine because I couldn't cope. I didn't have any coping skills. Yeah. But over time, over time, I've been able to cope on my own and think, yep, um, I hope she's having a good time. She, you know, we give each other a ring and she lets me know how she's going up there. And um, But I revel in the freedom in the time that she's gone. <laughs> Yeah. To enjoy that that freedom that, yeah, living with someone is sometimes difficult and you like to have your space and it's great when she's out all day and I can do what I want all day. But And we do things together, but it's just like you need that time and space alone. So when she's away, it's just like, woo -hoo. <laughs> happy <laughs> Happy freedom days and that, all that kind of thing. So, yeah. yeah. But the loneliness be the most difficult thing living, living independently and can you give anyone or our listeners some advice on how you help support these issues so um loneliness was one of your issues so what advice would you give if someone was feeling that especially now in our time um keep in touch with people yeah. um i do a lot of um, communication by email. Yep. Um, I communicate with a lot of people by email, so that's me, but other people would probably need a phone call from Lifeline yep. or their GP or a psychologist or psychologist or a medical person or their carer um, to, to help them with um, those kinds of issues. Um, I think the medical profession would be the best to assist them if they were feeling that way or they were feeling depressive, suicidal yeah. thoughts, that kind of thing. So that would be the best advice I could give someone yeah, with medical um, advice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, seek medical yeah. advice. Yeah. 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 Um, but other than that, use a good old telephone and mobile phone as I have you know, these days. Keep yeah. in touch with someone, give them a call, say, um, how are you going? Is there anything I can yeah. do for you? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we just have um, people in our church. We have elderly people. So if their husbands are in hospital or they've passed on, 
give them a call and say, hey, is there anything I can do? Some people have um, passes, you know, those passes, the worker permits, things. Yeah. They can actually go around and actually chat to them. And last year we delivered meals. Like my mum and I had passes, um, worker permits, we should say. Yeah. And we have a monthly, we had another person in the church who would cook up like roast chicken and veggies and stuff and it and a roll and dessert and stuff. It was oh, like a meals on wheels cool. thing, but we did that for our church and a lot of people appreciated yeah. that. Yeah. We delivered Christian sort of newspapers to them all and that was really good as well. And, you know, we were given letters to post and that it just got us out of the house. But yeah. something like that would help, like a meals on wheels service or a care or something like that would actually help them overcome those issues. Yeah, and that's actually a really wonderful idea as well. So people don't mm. think of those volunteer options to um, battle loneliness yeah. or, you know, just yeah. to get out there and socialise again and get out of yeah. the house and do those things. So thank you for that, Karen. That's actually really yeah, nice. No this is very informational. Yeah. 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 You're never alone. Like if you're alone, you just reach out for help. If you can't reach out for help, and you don't know what to do, but you've got to reach out for help if you're lonely. Yeah, yeah that's a very good advice. Yeah. Really good. Okay, so thank you for joining us today. Um, to Not a problem. Yeah, thank you. Out there and the wonderful story you shared with us and some great advice. Advice, yes. Yeah. Yeah, thank so, you, Karen, for those advice. And no hopefully- worries, Camille. Hopefully our subscribers and our listeners will listen to Karen and yeah and be you know prepared to live independently. Don't be scared. Yes. <laughs> Don't be scared. Yeah. Yeah. There's a whole big world out there waiting for you to explore it. Go for it. Correct. Right. <laughs> beautiful view to have. All right. Thank you, everyone. And thank, thank you. Bye. Thank subscriber. you. Subscriber. Please Bye. thank you. Bye. Bye.